Oh, We're live. We are. Apparently. Shall, Woo! I, shall, oh, shall I move it a fraction? Try, yeah. move it. Try moving yourself a little bit. Yeah. Oh, how does and that? you can come to me. I always come to you. <laughs> I'm like a... I'm like a... Like a magnet. Come a little bit closer. What did you say magnet? I said spaniel. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be afraid. That's it. Imagine if we're just talking and no one's listening. Well, we are talking and no one's listening. We can see that we're not... That no one's Jennifer! Listening. First there. Jennifer, Jennifer Lawrence, hello. Hello, darling. How are Lovely you? Lovely to see you. Um, uh, Jennifer, you are the... Uh, as the first, you have the privilege of giving us a sound check. Yes. Are, are we live? Can you hear us? We found a little microphone <laughs> somewhere in a drawer. So we got after given a few years ago. We can't hear you. Hello, everyone. Wow, you're all there. We're wow. All Sounds great. Woohoo! So fantastic. 80 of you already. Where have 80? Blimey, 96. Bloody hell, you lot. What are you up to? Do something more appropriate with your Sundays. Don't just listen to us rabbiting on about stuff. Uh, hello, everyone. You are all fantastic, beautiful, and uh, tremendously... Hopeful, tremendously. Tremendously, <laughs> tremendously welcome. Amazing. Amazing, yes. You're all tremendously welcome. So, okay. So that's brilliant. So uh, welcome to our live stream from sunny La Rochelle. Finally, finally, it is sunny after... What do we say, 10 days of bad yeah. weather? So first of all, um, if everyone could give us a thumbs up, that would be awesome. Yeah. And secondly, let's do some um, quick hellos. Quick hellos. A few um, quick hellos. You or, did, no, jump, hello away, my love. Okay, I've got the, yeah. Um, okay, Andrew, hello. Justin, hello. Dawn from Michigan. Uh, Gary from Cape Town. Um, Stefan, Stefan, someone's Ste in Morocco. Stefan? Uh, sailing dragonfly, canal zone kid, head sail, Rachel Andrews, Glenn, uh, Joseph, Josh, uh, Christine, Lisa, Nicola, Daniel, Robert, Wayne, Zari. Hello, Zari. And Salim says, What is this meant to achieve? <laughs> That's nothing, an excellent absolutely question. nothing, mate. Nothing. You might also well just and just go back to whatever mundane task you were doing before <laughs> this popped up on your feet. Yeah, you, are... you You will learn nothing. Nothing. Just go ahead and enjoy some mint tea or something. Yes. Anyways, what uh, else do we have to say? Yeah. So, uh, as with all our live feeds, let us just uh, lay down what we how we do this. If we haven't said uh, answered your question or said hello, keep asking it because this. The way it all works, it scrolls up so quickly. So, uh, yeah, just keep asking your question and uh, we will answer them as, as well as we can. And, yeah, so yep. um, ask away, we will answer. And then when you've run out of questions, we're going to have a beer. <laughs> it's fairly <laughs> Simple straightforward. Simple as that. Nice, easy, nice, easy thing. So, um, yes. So someone says, how are we both doing? We're, we're doing good. good. We're good. We're good. It's been... When did we last do a live stream? What, three or four weeks ago? Mm -hmm. Three or four weeks ago. So uh, since then, for those of you who follow us over on all our other social medias, um, we have decided to, we're staying here for winter. That was the last time. We were, the last time we talked, we were all uh, preparing to head back to uh, England for, the, for winter. And um, to cut a very long story short, we had to have our gearbox rebuilt, which has been done. We had to have a bow thruster controller shipped out because that decided to go a little bit tits up. Um, and so we just thought, well, that leaves us three weeks to get back to the UK. In that three weeks, we have about three months worth of beautiful cruising locations to see. Mm. And we just thought, no, we're going to stop now and we'll do it all next year. I mean, we're actually saying today that, you know, the cruising around here, we could easily do yeah. it over several years. Yeah. So to only spend a couple of weeks yeah, um, on it, it wouldn't do it justice. Yes, 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 so, yes. yeah. So we're good. Um, okay, so a few questions have already popped up on the screen about our catamaran search. Um, so yes, obviously that's still under underway, it's still ongoing, and um, I mean... Let's just answer the, the question that people keep asking, so it doesn't yeah. keep popping up. Yes, we are seeing the Exquisite X5. Oh, yeah. that wasn't the question I was seeing. Oh, no, because everyone's like, oh, are you seeing the Exquisite X5? But yes, we are. Sorry, Diana, what, what did you think the first question was going to be? I thought the first question was, what's your favourite catamaran? Oh. I've, se I've seen that a few times come up. What's your favourite catamaran? Um, well, we're not going to tell you, and that's not the way... Well, actually, because it's a spoiler, because literally we are working on the episode now, which is the roundup episode that you've all asked for, because everyone's like, well, you've done all these catamaran reviews, which is the best? And to save you having to go back through them all and compare them, we are doing that episode for you. So that will be out, ooh, in about um, three or four weeks or two weeks on Patreon. So that's that's where you are, and we so, are with that. So Mari has said... Um, is this all talk or are you actually going to pull the trigger at some point? No, oh, it's... What? Sorry, the, the boat just moved. I think like a big wave or something. Yeah. Um, 
definitely, I mean, at the moment it's talk because as you can see from where we're sitting, we are still on our lovely 38 foot boat, um, our mana hole, and uh, she's up for sale. And as I'm sure probably 99.9% .9 of you who are watching appreciate, uh, unless you, you know, unless we release the capital in this boat, we won't be able to afford a catamaran. So we need to sell this boat before buying a new boat. So until she sells, then yes, it's mainly talk, obviously. And then once she sells, then it's then action. Then we'll pull the trigger. And yeah, and yeah we, we have, what, what I would say about all these cash runs is, um, and this is bleeding obvious. It's one of those things that I talk about a lot. There are so many things that you that are bleeding obvious, but then when you actually get, you know, actually get involved in it, you kind of get a better perception of things. And that is how complicated the selection process for catamarans is. We started using um, your suggestions for how um, how to choose a catamaran, what, what, what criteria do we want? So you came across when we put a poll out with safety for one and then build quality for another and then performance. But there are so many other things now that we're like, actually, we need to go back and reassess those. So my thoughts are, and we've talked about this, once we've got the, the, uh, the basics like a, a short list of what mm. we're gonna what we're gonna shortlist. We are then then gonna go back and look at the other things. And there are so many things that I'm like, actually, that just doesn't work for us. It doesn't work for us. Like what? Well, for instance, you know, when you go to boat show, we you know occasionally you get, you get some we get some muppet on the on the internet going. Well, how can you? There assume? are muppets on the internet. There are yes. <laughs> no. Well, there's always like people going, oh, you you know your your reviews don't you know you can't tell a cat around until you've sailed it. I'm like, well, yeah, we know, but that what you can see is at boat shows. So, um, so we all we can do at the moment is see what we've seen at boat shows, and then we'll go and test sell, and then we'll go and test sell the ones that we've shortlisted. So the thing about these, the, the ones that we've seen sitting on docks in 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 marinas at boat shows, is as follows. So you see what the dealer and the broker wants you to see. You see the shiny stuff. You see the the living, and what the what the dream could you know could be. Mm. But you look at so many other things, and you're like. <sighs> really really so one thing that is getting me at the moment and this is my bent and my little kink at the moment is uh what goes on below the waterline what is the bloody thing made of now monoholes are easy because monoholes should be solid grp if you're buying a, a plastic boat solid grp below the waterline and that means that when you you know if you hit something you have got a solid piece of fiber, a solid lump of fiberglass, and you should be all right. Mm -hmm. However, catamarans spend a lot of time trying to save weight, and so what they do is they have balsa core. A lot of them are balsa cored, or they're, they're composite below the, the waterline. So for those of you not in the know, you have fiberglass, then balsa, then loads of wood, and then fiberglass again. But for the point of view of impact resistance, that's really bloody poor. Yeah, That's not going to do... That's not going to do you any good if you hit a shipping container or you hit, you know, even a reef. Mm. So you, it's not, it's not just, you know, what if you hit like something massive. You have to look to how that, how that is going to really impact. Pardon the pun there. Mm -hmm. Your ability uh, to continue sailing if you do hit something. So what we're looking at is well, if you are, if you are building a boat with a balsa core below the waterline what are you doing what are you doing to make that impact resistance and so some boats um have kevlar as well as the uh, the, the fiberglass some boats have kevlar and for carbon fiber below the waterline and this is what you need to look at because really i, I was watching um, a video the other day uh, I think it was it's some boatyard in the Caribbean that is really rebuilding. It's a Lagoon 70 or 80 that just had the bottom ripped off of it. So really, when you guys are looking to catamarans, don't just look at the shiny stuff because really it, the, the broker's just dangling some shiny stuff in front of your eyes and going, look at the look at the ice machine. <laughs> but you're like, okay, so what is it? What is it below the waterline? Is it balsa cord? Have you reinforced it with Kevlar? And they're like, oh, ice machine. In a double fridge, hot tub. We went to see a boat with a hot tub yesterday. Okay. Sorry, darling. <laughs> All right. So I think we've heard uh, Nick's opinion on the balsa core subject. Um, okay. So we've got some more um, questions. Can I just ask that one? For, ask that one for Bond. 
No, you ask her. <laughs> Trond, I'll get to your question. Sorry, mate. I do try and like <laughs> instill some kind of order. <laughs> Doesn't always work. Okay. So uh, Jeremy asked, is a canal boat a contender for Ruby Rose 2? Um, so as you guys are seeing at the moment, we uh, recently went through the French canals on our monohull. And um, we fell in love with the canals. We absolutely adored our time on the canals and we have a real hankering to explore the rest of the European canals. And for those of you who don't know, the, the canal network in Europe, in kind of, you know, France and, and Germany and Holland, Belgium, is really extensive. But we're definitely not going to do it in a fiberglass boat. We are, no, not again. We will do it in a purpose-built barge. But I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. I think that that's maybe something for like in the future. So I think Ruby Rose Four, maybe. R yeah, maybe Ruby Rose Ruby Three. Ruby Rose Four or maybe Four. Maybe Three. No, I think I, I think I know what Three is going to be. Oh no! I was about to tell you to whisper in my ear, but you're like, <laughs> <laughs> so like what? It's going to be a Schmanangda Angda Bar in seventy. No, no. So uh, yeah, so. Uh, well, well, now you have to say, what's well, going to be Ruby Rose 3? Do I have a say in this? Obviously, you've already made up your mind. Well, a submarine. A submarine. I think it's going to be a Puffin 50. You just like the... No, I do like Puffin 50s. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Puffin 50s aside. Okay. Um, as the search term goes. So, um, <laughs> yes. Do you know what? Uh, the thing about the canal boats is, and we've talked about this, and we were talking about doing a comparison video of Mediterranean cruising versus Caribbean cruising because we've now done both and we've got a lot of kind of perspective on what the difference is and the problem is with canal boat cruising is that it is really for in many cases people of a much much different age group to ourselves we're talking the average age of canal boaters I'd probably say of owners not people chartering is probably between 60 and 80 yeah they are it is really something which would be considered a retirement um project mm. and there's nothing wrong with that and i will get to that age hopefully and still be in rude health and that's what i want to do but mm. for now while i can tear the ass out of life that's what i'm doing so um another question was why haven't you had a look at the discovery camera and actually we have yeah funnily enough the um there is a discovery 50 uh literally moored up two boats down and it's up for sale so um a couple of days ago we were able to go on board and have a look we weren't able to film because it's like a privately owned uh boat it's not for display um but there are you know if you wanted to look there are videos tours of, of the discovery catamaran on the internet um so we have we have looked at the discovery cat and it's a great catamaran it's a beautiful catamaran, actually. Um, it's. I think we spent a couple of hours with the owner yesterday. Was it? It was yesterday, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah it was yesterday. Um, and so, really, it, it's a beautiful boat. It's not for us. And um, I think the reason it's not for us, it's too big. It is just too big a boat. And that boat is 10 years old, and you know full well that. A ten-year-old boat, things are going to go wrong, mm. and that boat new is over a million quid. Well over. Well over a million quid. So that's one point three million dollars new. So when things go wrong with it, the custom parts on that you are going back to Discovery to get fixed, and it would just be we. It would be for us. It would be a money pit. We are not financially able, even if we could afford it. Um, even if we could afford it, which we can't. Well, we could no, no, we can't at the price it's at. It's it's up for six hundred thousand pounds, and it's it's beyond what we can afford. Even if we could afford it, we would just probably want a th hundred thousand in the bank, um, lying around mm. for repairs on it because that's what a ten-year-old boat is going to need. Because it's not just oh, you need a new chart plotter. All of a sudden, you'll find oh, you've got a, tr a crack somewhere, or something's turned up, or you need new rudders or something. Uh, and so yeah. Um, okay, so um, a slight change of subject. Stefan desperately wants to know, from what country have you had the best beer? Which country has the best beer? I'm obviously going to say Australia. Nick's obviously going to say England. And probably 51% of our American uh, our audience are Americans. So you probably say America. Okay, so listen, America. Germany, surely. Belgium. No, nope, no, nope, nope. okay. Belgium has to nope. be up there. <sighs> okay. I can speak with authority on many things. And I think beers of the world is going to be up there, right? So this, 
This is, thank you, Justin. That's very kind just, of... just a quick interlude. Justin wants to know if the moustache is going to make a comeback. And that's the second time I've seen the moustache mentioned in the comments today. Vote for the Tash. Give, <laughs> give, give the Tash a... Hashtag. The, hashtag vote for, <laughs> vote for hashtag porn Tash turning 20. Um, <laughs> so, um, beers. Okay. When I first went to the USA as an adult, I, this was in 1999, right? Uh oh. Yeah. Is this going to be one of your stories that goes no, on no, forever? No, 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 right. Anyway, at that point, I thought American beer was the worst beer I'd ever had. Mm -hmm. Like, it was literally, it was like taking one measure of beer and one measure of, like, fizzy water mm. and blending it together and calling it beer. And I'm like, that's terrible. However, when we went back to the States two years ago, man, your beer has improved. Mm. Like, craft breweries yeah. we're in South Carolina. So good. The only problem with the craft beers in the USA is they're so bloody strong. Yeah. Like 9, 10% were like wallop, wallop, wallop. <laughs> I ended up with a tattoo after that, a night on that beer. Anyway, pooch. So, uh, yes, uh, best beers in the world. Belgian beers are too strong. Do you remember we went to Belgium and that, that girl sold me a 12% pint? <laughs> Ooh. I think that's only because you didn't like look at the no, what, alcohol. No, okay, what happened was level. we turned. No, what happened was, I shall tell you, I was there, it was you, I. You were there, but you don't remember. Well, what happened was, this blonde girl turned up in one of these kind of medieval buxom tops with all the embroidery in, like, like that. And you I'm, just got like. And I'm like, oh, so uh, what did you recommend? And she's like, hey, should I bring you the beer and you sure you like it? It's good, yeah? So literally, like, I'm like, wallop, and I'll have another one of them. And then I'm. You couldn't stand up. Bollocks, yes. Anyway, exactly. uh, yeah, still to be determined which country has the best beer. Yeah. Um, okay, so I feel like I'm very far behind. It's okay, it's okay. If you have, if we haven't answered your questions yeah. here. Uh, so what, Eric has just asked, because I'm just doing this from here. Um, yeah. So there's lots of cat names coming up. Uh, Oscar, Spooky, and other things. Um, but catamarans. <laughs> um, the U251 is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful craft. And as the detractors and also the people that agree with me uh, on our review of the U251... It is a beautiful boat and I am biased. And I am biased because, you know, uh, when I was first looking at boats, this is, and I've been looking at boats for a long while in many different capacities. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Jennifer. Oh, La Belle de Gabou. <laughs> um, uh, like the Uchimo 41 was a pin-up boat. It was a, it's a sexy looking boat. The Uchimo what? 49. Oh. So, so I think I said 41. Yeah. The Uchimo 49 is, hey, Zari, how are you doing? Um, <laughs> it's a really beautiful boat. And so it, I kind of look at it and it's kind of like the the poster boat. So, you know, you, when you, if you had a Porsche on your wall as a child or a, a teenager because you're into cars, if you're into boats, the Ultra 49 is that. And the Ultra 51 is a better looking version of that. The problem is that that boat has a couple of little flaws that really, really annoy me. And as mentioned in that video, the, 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 the review video that we did, Firstly, you can put a bimini on it. So I mentioned that, but, you know, it's, it, it, it didn't have one. And at Mathieu at Outremer said no one has ever had one. No one's ever take, had one put on. Or he said something like someone put one on and took it straight off. The cooker is in the wrong place on that boat, right? Yeah. And the engine access is dangerous, in yeah. my opinion. Yeah. There you go. Um, okay, so we've got a question. If price wasn't an issue, which, you know, if only... Um, what would you choose? What is the maximum size for the catamaran that you could operate with two people? Um, uh, if price wasn't... Okay, when you say price, if we could buy the boat and... Say for instance we won the lottery, so maintaining it and mooring it wasn't a problem. Yeah, like insuring it. Insuring it, mooring it. I'd be difficult... I At the moment, depending on whether I wanted the space or the luxury, I think I'd be torn between privilege 510. mm um, and the Sea Wind 1600, yeah, and the Uchima 51, yeah. Those three at the moment. Uh, Not, I mean, we haven't seen everything in that yeah. in that kind of. But I, for, as for size, I don't think that I'd want to go bigger than about 50 foot. No, um, you don't need it. You don't need you, it. I mean, you, you definitely don't need it. And it gets to the point where it's like, what's the point of having all the space? It's just two people on board. Absolutely. I mean, you know. Which brings me onto some question that one of our patrons asked us today to bring up today about ah. catamaran size. Okay. So. We were talking to a really lovely couple who have just um, taken delivery here in La Rochelle of um, a Naughty Tech 40. Yeah. Yeah. Really lovely Canadian couple. Outremer. Outremer. <laughs> um, so um, no one can see what I just did that because the question's come up and I've just said Outremer. <laughs> 
I like he's obviously having some sort of like Tourette's episode. Someone just Uchimere said, related Tourette's. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I did. U- Uchimere's. <laughs> Literally, yeah. Okay, so someone said say someone Uchimere. said okay. say right, Uchimere just, again. I think. Just, sorry. So. I think the Americans say it differently. No, the Americans say it differently. Okay, it's French. Anyway, okay, carry on. Nortec 40. So they bought Nortec 40 and they were saying that they they were French-Canadian, which I suppose makes them half French and half Canadian. Canadian. So they understand both cultures. And they were saying that when they went in America, when they were in the States, um, talking to brokers about buying the Naughty Tech, the Naughty Tech, they were saying, oh, you can't have a 40-foot boat. You need to have a 50-foot boat. 50-foot cat is the minimum you can need. Yeah. And, you know, you have to have a generator and you have to have this and you have to have that. And really... You don't, for a couple, even for four people, you need a 40 to 45 foot catamaran. You don't need that much space. You don't. And I do believe that brokers really upsell. It's bleeding obvious. They upsell stuff you do not need. So all these people that buy, you know, Leopard 48, you don't need a Leopard 48. You need a Leopard 40. You need a Leopard 44. You need something smaller. And so all this stuff... I think it's Leopard 45 these Whatever days. the hell it is. We reviewed it. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, Before we put out a video about that. So you don't need it, you know. Yeah. Okay, let's do the Fontaine Pajos. There's a 45, there's a 47. You don't need a 47-foot boat if there's if you're buying it as an owner. Because really, you know, you don't. It's, 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 it's a nonsense. And the reality of it is that building a 47-foot boat is probably almost the same cost as building a 45-foot boat from the, cost of, the point of view of expense. Yeah? Yeah. But they charge you that much more for it. So there's so much more profit in these boats. And that's one reason why a lot of English yacht companies went bust, because they tried to move into the upper brackets of... Yeah, the, the profit margin is a lot yeah. bigger with the bigger boats, which is obviously why they try and upsell yeah, all their customers. And, you know, as Nick was saying, this this Canadian, uh, French-Canadian couple was, were told by the broker yeah. that they, the, I think it was a Lagoon 50 was the perfect boat for them. And they yeah. were like... We it's don't, sure. like, this is our first boat, and the broker was like, no, 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 the 50, the 50. They're like, but what about the 40 or the 42? He's like, no, 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 <laughs> you have to have the 50. Yeah, the 50 is a million. <laughs> and they, they were like, what? So anyway, uh, moving on. Um, Parker asks, um, he's from Canada as well, from Ontario, and he Ontario. said... Ontario. Is it Ontario? Well, I'm Australian, so I say Ontario. Bloody Ontario. Oh, wait, carry Ontario. Carry on. Sorry, Ontario. Um, my brother and I are thinking of chartering a local boat, which is the um, hire boat yeah, company. Yeah. In, yeah, in France. Yeah. In France, in, in the Canal de Midi. Mm-hmm. Um, is there any truth to sewage smells? Yes. Uh, yes, there is. Really? Yes. Where? In, in the Canal de Midi. I do not recall that. We were talking, so basically, uh, all I would say to you about if you are going to the Canal de Midi, do not charter anything in July or August. Make sure it's May or June or September. One, because of the heat, and two, because those local boats, none of them have holding tanks. So there is, um, we were talking to that lady and she was like, the smell here, like July and August is nuts, are, are nuts. I don't. I don't remember anything about the the smell. Are you we sure? didn't. We didn't smell it. No. But when it gets really hot and it's absolutely rammed, yeah. So there's more sewage goes in in yeah. July and August. Yeah, you're not meant. By the way, you meant to not do that. You meant well, there's to toilets use on holding all the, holding tanks. There's no. They don't have holding tanks on those boats. The local boats do not have holding tanks. I thought they did. Nah. Mm. Okay. Anyway, we didn't notice it, but no. we were there in June. Yeah. But it, seriously, there are other reasons why you should not go in July and August. It is it's properly rammed. proper enough. Hey, MJ there. Hey, Matt and Jessica. Hello. Matt and Jessica, I want to talk to you too. <laughs> now, listen to me. Uh, Teresa has been talking to me about you deciding to sail from Norway to Morocco for... Don't be dumb. Like, come and stay with us, like, somewhere in Europe, and we're going to hang out. We're going to be in London for most of the off-season. So come to the UK, and then we'll hang out. And, and we'll... we, they, we can explore the beers of the various and regions, actually, as people have been asking us. Because Teresa has told me that Matt's a lightweight and can't drink. <laughs> So um, that's what we're going to do. So Matt and ourselves and Jessica and my... That's and not what I said. Yes, you did. You said Matt's an absolute lightweight. If he has two sherbets, his <laughs> trousers come off. I think what I actually said is you and Jessica are going to get along just fine because apparently Jessica doesn't mind uh, the old drink. Of course we want to see you. Yes. Just, but there's no sun in the UK. Yeah, no, don't, there's no sun. Anyway, questions. There's no sun. Questions, questions, questions. <laughs> Please. Um, okay. I actually had another... Oh, yeah. Brad says, your audio is great. What did you do? Teresa has an extra nipple on her shoulder. It's like a, it's a, yes, we, um, 
we finally found a little auxiliary microphone. Yeah. So listen, Thanks. we have 608 people watching and also MJ Sailing are watching. So maybe you should all, 610 of you now, give your opinions to Matt and Jessica as to where they should winter. Because apparently it's all over the place. It could be Norway. It could be Morocco. It could be anywhere in between. So why don't you, we'll do this through the medium of democracy. Yeah. Tell Matt and Jessica where they Cast want. your vote. Cut one your one vote. word only. One word. Okay, so the first Morocco, one is UK. Gibraltar, UK... There are three options. Someone said Australia. Actually, they're not going to no, get no, to Australia. No, no, no. The, the three options are Gibraltar, Morocco, or the UK. UK. Sorry, UK. UK. UK, mm-hmm. UK, London, yeah. Ohio. Mm. Scotland, Gibraltar, Canary Islands. Canary Islands isn't a bad one, but it's a bit far away. You can't get back. Oh, yeah. Um, people like, I don't think people quite understand the concept of like the three option thing. <laughs> Feel for like go to Austria. <laughs> <laughs> you go to Switzerland. It's landlocked. You can drag the bloody thing. Across. Eric just says beer. Okay. I think... <laughs> in Moscow. Yeah, okay. All right, so Luxembourg, uh... which I believe is a landlocked country. <laughs> All right, you like enough. Enough of this malarkey. But MJ Sailing has listen. I think the people have spoken. Six hundred twenty-nine people. Someone says Wyoming, and you know they're not going to sail to Wyoming. <laughs> anyway, so uh, the vote is. Um, Seems to be completely, uh, yes, those, so whoever keeps saying Miami, they're not going to Miami. <laughs> or, or Cyprus. Uh, anyway, or Ramsgate. So, uh, yes, we have a lot of suggestions where, because we come from the east coast of the UK, which is fantastic, and it's cheap, and it's a drying morning, so you pay a third that you do on the south coast. Right? So, uh, thank you to Matt and Jessica. Uh, yes. Okay, so that. Adam has a good question, which is, having spent time with Gone with the Winds and also Kitty Wake, um, are there any other channels you would like to meet up with? We've also spent time with Tall as End of Summer. Oh, yeah, Tula. I'm not... Can you, can you close that blind over? I'm getting, like, a glare on my face. Do you need any shoes polishing or can I carry around on my back all afternoon? Oh, Go on. Um, thank you. That's better. Um, yeah, we've also hung out with Tula, although... No, we did make an episode with them. Um, yeah, Tula took a... Tula taught us to spearfish. I did. <laughs> not that we were any, <laughs> any good at You've it. You've got a lot to answer for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, there's loads of channels that we would like to hang out with. I think All of them. All of them. Any of them. There's, there's none there's that we wouldn't. There's very few that I think I wouldn't want to hang out with. Obviously, Matt and Jessica being like, yeah, Matt right and Jessica up there. there. And I think Uma are coming to London as well, aren't I they? I think Uma are going to be in the UK. They'll be, yeah, I think... So. At the Southampton Boat Show, maybe? No, they're, uh, they're doing South African, the South oh, African okay. one. Well, anyway, um, yeah, lots. Yes, and I have as well as an Amazon's. Yes, I'm an East Coast sailor through and through. So, yeah, do you know what? All I would say is that, you know, behind the scenes, a lot of us sailing channels all gas and talk about things. And, you know, so we do know each other. Uh, some of us on the, like, yeah, like, yeah. We, we haven't met in person yet. But we, we are. We're just ticking them off. It's like tr- top trumps or like an advent calendar of sailing channels. <laughs> Yeah. So instead of like an angel, you get Uma. <laughs> or instead of a Christmas tree, you get Matt and Jessica. <laughs> I don't know how your brain works sometimes, even after all. On the 24th, all... when baby Jesus opens the door, you get my smiling face. <laughs> <laughs> Boy. Okay, so moving s- swiftly along. Yes. Um, we actually did have um, other things to talk about. Yeah. Um, that... I thought maybe people would be interested in. I feel like we've covered the catamaran subject fairly yes. substantially. And we've had the since we started on this particular we have live chat. Oh, 640 of you! Please click the click the button. Oh, it's, yes, um, <laughs> click the what's it called? The notification bell. Yeah. Click the notification bell. Oh, tick, oh, tick the button. Tick the button. Tick the on. What was it my mother said the other day? <laughs> Pull the lever. No. Turn the knob. <laughs> turn the knob on your on your iPad to turn it on. <laughs> His mother said, um, I need to turn the knob to get the emails. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, doesn't want that on an iPad, mother. Anyway, good on, her, good on my mum for having an iPad. Uh, Absolutely. So where were we talking? We were banging on about... Um... No, okay. So I think um, let's move on to some of the things that we originally said we would talk about. Yeah, so we're definitely, definitely, definitely doing... Um... Oh, we've won the ashes. <laughs> um, we're definitely... Hang on. What are you laughing about? BBC popped up with the ashes. <laughs> I feel like that's just like Tourette's voice. <laughs> yeah, very much how your brain works. Okay, so what? Okay, so what we're we talking about? Uh, Annapolis. So okay, uh, let's do this in order. I need mm-hmm. to compose myself and talk sensibly to you all. Um, we're definitely going to be at Annapolis. We're definitely, uh, we're definitely going to be reviewing a lot of the boats. And yes, we are definitely going to be uh, looking at the X Five. I think we've had to book that, haven't we? Uh, but yeah, the exquisite. We're going to look at lots of. Lots of catamarans. Yes, yes, yes. So we're looking at lots of different catamarans. We are going to look at all of those. And so those views will be out afterwards. We are more than likely um, be at Southampton Boat Show. 
Yes. Yes. Just uh, working out our exact schedule yeah. at the moment. And we've got a few things that we want to kind of like make sure that they are, are not going to happen uh, in our calendars before we commit to the uh, Annapolis Boat Show. Southampton. Southampton Boat Show, yeah. So we'll be at Annapolis. We'll be in Annapolis. We'll be in America for two weeks. Um, we have so much to do and we cannot wait to be at Annapolis. Like, I cannot wait to get to the States. Just, to, yes. So I'm pretty excited about that. So I'm going to be like a child full of M&Ms on Christmas morning. Th vomiting. No, no, no. Green and orange chocolate no. buttons all over. You're going to be calm and level-headed and not in any way like <laughs> like a child. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay, so Southampton is maybe probably like 80% going to happen, um, but just follow us on social media if yeah, you yeah. are in the UK and planning to go to Southampton, and um, so you know when we're going to be there, if you want to be there when we're there. Yeah, but we'll, yeah, Southampton's uh, going to be, sorry. <clears throat> and <laughs> we will also be in Annapolis reviewing boats, and we'll be there for the whole time, and we, lots of people have asked us, we are not doing a public meetup, I'm afraid, um, we're just going to do a patron meetup. But that's all fully booked. So, yeah, uh, that's all we're doing. So, but, sorry, regarding the meetups, we are going to be there the whole time. We're not just being wheeled out for an hour if you win a competition. So we will be at the Annapolis Boat Show for most days and we will be on the pontoons, like just walking around looking at boats. Yeah. So stop and say hello. And, and, and for all of those who don't know, we are having limited edition stickers printed yes. for the Annapolis Boat Show. So these are pretty cool stickers. They are. If you, if you awesome. are not on our, um, if you haven't seen our social media, but we'll put them out again. So we are giving these stickers away. They are like our regular Ruby Rose stickers, only the special Annapolis 2019 ones. Only they're special. They are special. <laughs> um, they're extra special. Well, the idea is that we're going to go to Annapolis every year or every other year, or but probably every, every every year, and there's going to be like, so each time you meet us, you'll get one, uh, and you can stick it on your koozie holder or, or whatever the hell you want to do with it. But the only requirement for you to get a free sticker is that you have to, if you're wearing our merchandise, because we know that you, you're buying all our T-shirts, so if you're wearing a hat or a... A, a t shirt or a, a, a if you're wearing a koozie holder, you're wearing a koozie holder, you'll probably get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you're wearing our gear, the stickers are free. That's it. Yeah, we'll so give there them. You go. So, yeah, come and see us and we'll give them to yeah, you. Yeah, so if you see us until they run out, yeah, 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 until they run Indeed. out. Okay, good. Next, um, okay, so things that we are doing for our off season. Oh, so Ooh. it's obviously the end of August and by this time next week our boat um, will be will we leaving our boat will we'll we, waving we'll, we'll be waving goodbye so um, let us explain why we're finishing our season so early so yeah. um, for those of you who haven't been following us and for those of us you kind of may have um, thought well hang on it's still the end of August there is um, we had a problem with the gearbox we were going to go home and we haven't gone we haven't gone home we decided to I didn't stay, sell back to, sell back to the UK yeah. it's only 400 miles um, for various reasons, one of them is Brexit and the VAT status of our boat. We decided to remain here. The problem is that uh, this is, I think, the biggest marina in Europe. And every boat in this marina has to be out of the marina in the next week. Mm. And they've all gone to other marinas. And so we talked to the manager and he's like, we can pull your boat out of the water um, and store it on land for five weeks. And then you can have the boat back mid-October. And we're like thanks that's our only option really so um yeah that's where we are so we have had to and it, we're really happy to be here christ we're really happy uh, thanks christian thanks christian um, Excuse me. so that's that's what we are doing we decided to stay keep stay in europe for, for the for winter um but uh, there's a it's not it's not a boat show it's called la grande pavoir which sounds like a really fantastic cream-based dessert <laughs> but it's not it's actually it's a, it's a watercraft show so it's like you know, fishing boats and jet skis and all sorts of malarkey. Uh, and so that is here for a week at the end of September, but the, the entire marina gets cleared out and there's no marina spaces uh, locally. So we're here. And so our sailing season finished. We have been we are being lifted out tomorrow. Mm. So that, Did you explain why we didn't leave in the first place? Yeah, well, our gearbox packed up and gearbox Brexit. And, our, and also our bow thruster. Yeah, yeah. So there's been a few little things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just our bow well, thruster. Well, no, what happened was, so basically the gearbox, we had a gearbox problem, and it, it was a minor problem. Literally, we were trying to pull up a fuel dock and thought the revs aren't high enough here, something, something's going wrong. And because, you know, Ruby Rose is our little princess, I took, I went, you know, we went straight back to our, our dock, 
played around with the, the engine. I'm like, this isn't quite right. Found a mechanic. He couldn't actually replicate the problem for about an hour, could he? He's no, like, no, there's was, nothing wrong with this yeah. gearbox. I'm like, no, there is. In the end, he got it. To, he's like, oh, your clutch clone, your clutch. Clutch cones. Clutch cone is slipping. Cone. Cone. Um, so we had the gearbox rebuilt and then you clutch cone put in. And then we thought, right, we're ready to go now. The weather was really bad and we went out and Theresa and I said to each other, this boat doesn't want us to go home, you know, without being all hippie about it. Uh, came back because the weather was so bad. Yeah. And then as we got back to the dock, the bow thruster uh, joystick packed up. I went like, that's it. The boat doesn't want us to go. So we're staying here. Now there's something on my face from the blind. There's nothing on your face from the blind. There is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can do anything about it. No, I can't. You I'm, have I'm to suck have, it up, cupcake. I'm just going to have to like lean back. Uh, so anyway, so the question actually was, oh, sorry. Um, what are we doing during our off-season? Well, so we have some off-season. We have a, a fair amount of off-season. We will be back on the boat in New Year getting ready for, um, for, for 2020 season. However, we've got lots of really cool ideas that we want to float past you because... Uh, Number one on the list is chartering some other boats to have a look at catamarans. So we figured that rather than just sit there and go, oh, well, look at this. Isn't this a nice life raft position? Isn't this a good helm position? Isn't this a brilliant forward facing cockpit? Is this not, you know, what we need? We are going to go and charter some things. So that is one thing we're going to talk about. Yes. And I think that we are looking to charter a range of catamarans, including and maybe even especially catamarans that we um have features that we're not quite sure about so nick mentioned um the thanks john, thanks, john. cheers thanks, mate john. that's really kind um nick mentioned like the forward facing cockpit we, we were a little bit critical of the forward facing cockpit um in our review of the leopard 45 and so but we've never sailed on board a kind of around with with that feature yep. so it might be good to actually give that boat a test sail yep. maybe live on that boat for a while test out the forward facing cockpit and see if it's like you know kind of Yep. Just just check it all out, really. Um, Thanks, and thank you, Louis. Um, and with the open helms as well, obviously that's not a leopard thing, but like let's say the Nautitec or a Katana that has the open helms, you know, maybe we should charter a Nautitec or a Katana to see if we can get on with those open, open yep. helms. Um, so it's not just going to be about catamarans that we like really, really love. It's also going to, we're going to look at catamarans that we yeah. like have a few issues with and see whether they really are the deal breakers that we thought they would be. So if you guys have any, um, thoughts on that, then let us know. Um, yeah, we obviously, you know, charters are expensive, so we yeah. have to be a little bit selective. Um, Trying everything all at once. Yeah. No, so that was an idea for us to look into, um, the charter market Yeah. and actually rather than it's not just putting our money to our mouth is and go, okay, how, how are these yeah, boats? Do exactly. They, do they squeak? You know, do, is the furniture moving around? You know, is the, is the bridge deck clearance contributing to slap? And how, how does the build quality stand up to like heavy charter absolutely. use? Absolutely, yeah. And that's a, that's a good way of looking at it because everyone's like, oh, look, this 47 foot beer moth <laughs> is beautiful as it comes out of the factory. But then you pick up a charter version, you know, two years down the line, is all the veneer splitting? Is mm. is the construction? And so for, I think that's you know it's a brilliant point. Mm. But we're looking into it because it can be fiendishly, fiendishly, like fiend, ludicrous, like stupid, expensive. Yeah. You guys probably already know this. If yeah, you, so. And we don't. We probably will just stick to the two of us. So we're not going to be like splitting the cost between us and like three friend, three yeah. couples. It's just be two of us. It's just going to be us. So. Um, well, it'll be so. So, we're, so first, we're looking at chartering. Yeah. The second question that you've all asked now is where? Don't know. Wet Sundays is good. BBIs is good. Anywhere. Anywhere. It'll be warm. It's going to be warm, right? It'll be warm. <laughs> Tell me it's going to be warm. Yeah. You realise that you can't swim in the wet Sundays over the Australian summer. That there's things in the water that will probably not actually kill you, but definitely make you scream. All right. BBIs. <laughs> So, oh, we'll so, see. so charter, so chartering. That's one thing we're going to do. Mm. Second thing we're thinking about doing because so many of you said it is RVing. Yeah. For, so yeah. yeah. So I put on Facebook and Instagram earlier this morning, like, "Hey guys, we need your help. Um, give us some ideas for what we can do during our quite lengthy off season." And loads of you came back and said, "You know, you should definitely hire or buy a camper van, do like a road trip of you know." everywhere from Yorkshire which got loads of likes by the way everyone oh, liked that Yorkshire comment yeah. I'm like what's <laughs> what's up in Yorkshire <laughs> maybe we need to find out um to like Australia to America yeah. to Europe so that's something that's always appealed to us I mean 
kind of alternative lifestyles and tiny living that's obviously what we like anyway so yeah maybe we'll um we'll do like some van life stuff which would be awesome super cool yeah so i think so my idea is what you've got for van life um or you know small space living stuff yeah. um number one so really because it's van life, and this is where you're all gonna hopefully help the two places that we will probably consider doing this either is going to be australia or the second place is going to be california because uh, it will be over winter yeah yeah so so a european northern hemisphere winter and so there's so many places on the west coast of the united states i we want to see so really our plan is probably like number one of our plans of the land-based stuff is to pick up an rv somewhere like la mm. and just head north for a month or, or south or south where's well, mexico there's lots of other Down things. Down Mexico way, <laughs> where the tuna fish play. This is, this, the, these little lights, I think the sun's... Teresa, enough of the little lights. I think uh, the sun's going to go down soon. So yeah, so best, what, so, that, so that was... Big Sur, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so really, so that was an idea of ours to try... So if any of you know, like, RV <laughs> companies... <laughs> yeah, if any uh, of you guys, like, have any advice, like, further specific advice on that, then please let us know. So I used to own a camper van when I was a student, so I had a little Volkswagen... 1974 uh, bay window vw van which i loved and so camper vanning for me like it reminds me of like when i had long hair and played the guitar and used to eat mushroom omelette for breakfast you're gonna get all like nostalgic on me you're not gonna grow your hair out again what about the tash no nah. although if i had to choose i'd rather the tash than the hair san francisco the tash is that like a band or something a song <laughs> Oh, can someone please enlighten her? Um, what about SA? Yeah, or yeah, actually, South Africa. We've in never a been... van, we'd be dead in a week. I don't know if you're allowed to say that. The, okay, I, I would, I would be, pro I, I, yeah, I, I think probably. Uh, okay, South Africa. It probably won't be South Africa. We could do safari in a van. Yeah, well, I've never been to Africa, and I'd really like to go anywhere in Africa. So I think that that is definitely a yes, cool so, option. But the point is that the RV market in the states is so huge, and Nikki and Jason talked to us about it, and we used that. So that's so basically. So number one is um, charter. Charter number two, um, getting an RV and going so RV. If anyone can help us out with either of those two things, please let us know. Yeah, and then we'll, what we'll do is we'll obviously just drive up the west coast of the USA or down the west coast of the USA or east to west or whatever. And um, come and say hi. Yes. We'll Ruby Rose the side of it. And uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll be there. Yep. So we'll let you know. And to we'll say the truth, know. what I was saying uh, to Therese is because, um, and a lot of you may know this on, you know, work this out that, um, having an off-season for us is a really, really good thing because when we're sailing and fixing a boat, probably 50 to 70% of our time has to go into um, has to go into keeping this boat running, sailing it, fixing it, you know, passage planning and stuff. Mm. Whereas, really, if we if the boat's out of the water or tied up and we're RVing, we can spend so much time just getting on with filmmaking and showing you what we do and kind of asking you for help and seeing Americana. Because I love America. So I like every time we see all these American kind of small towns and all the kind of stuff you see on TV, I'm like, oh, I'm going to go see that. <laughs> so yes, that is it. But we don't know much about that. So that's idea two. What was idea three? I don't know if we've had an idea three. I think another idea was Thailand for charter. Yeah. Or the Philippines or somewhere in yeah. Southeast Asia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that would be cool. So, yeah. So, those are our plans. That's There are off-season plans. Um, yeah. So, um, we've had this question a couple of times. Um, would you recommend someone look at, looking at learning to sail to dinghy sail first? Yes. We've heard, heard that this can make better sailors. Would love your advice. Um, okay. So, there's two parts about that one is learning to sail and one is about boat ownership. And sometimes there's obviously an overlap in the Venn diagram. Um I think if you can under, if you can sail a dinghy, it's literally just um, you know you, you're just upscaling uh, everything. But the principle's the same, no? Sailing sailing a dinghy is the same as sailing a, a, a keel a, a fifty foot boat. Mm. It's just everything's bigger, and you know the damage you can cause is more extensive. Um, so yes, I would recommend you doing sailing um, sailing a dinghy, and those courses are relatively inexpensive. You find a good course.
Um, you get wet, you fall in, but mm. you understand things. And really, all I would say about all this sort of stuff is that um, understand the basic principles. You can read about it and read about it and read about it, but until you actually get on the water and feel the wind and feel how a boat heals, um, you, you don't get it. It's like, as I keep saying, it's like someone explaining to you over and over again about what chicken tastes like if you never tasted chicken. You have to experience it. There you go. So what else? What other questions? What other questions do we have? Um, I don't know. Um, ah. What? Why'd you say, huh? We had questions. Um, we can't be out of questions. There's always hundreds of questions. We're not out of questions. I just haven't been very good at um, keeping track of the questions Adam today. asked, what do we have after our Jaguar 25? After our Jaguar 25, we, I bought a Hans 320. Now, that at the time, and this is what I was saying to someone over on Patreon today about, the ja about my experience with boats. When I bought my Jaguar 25, I thought, hang on a minute, this, is the, this boat is the bee's knees. But I knew it was cheap and rubbish, but I wanted to fix stuff. I wanted to learn how to fix a boat so that I could fix it if I ever bought a bigger boat. And as I always say, that boat cost five to six thousand. It was small. And I knew that if I sold it or sunk it, if I sunk it, it I'd lost five to six thousand. But more importantly, I kind of worked out that if I just wanted to sell it, I'd probably lose a thousand or two thousand. So the total loss is two thousand. It, it wasn't that great. Whereas if I bought a half a million quid boat as a first boat and then didn't like it, um, then you'd be like, oh, you know, you've got, the loss is huge. Um, hey, Ro someone said, Roger's here. So, so anyway, um, <laughs> Ro Roger in the house. <laughs> I keep getting this I'm like a cat. Anyway, so the point I'm making to you is that you should start with small boats. So someone asked about my first boat. What's wrong with you? Sorry. People are watching. You can't just Why be... can't you just say hi, Rod, and then get on with your sentence? You like just, just... there's like several stages <laughs> to your distraction, and then getting back on track. You're gonna try me with a silver, a, boy, a, a little ball of silver foil. Yeah, exactly. Um, second boat I bought was a Hans, a Hans three twenty, which at the time cost a lot more money. It was about seventy thousand. I bought it new, and I thought that boat was amazing. I thought it was everything because it was my first kind of new shiny boat. The problem with that is that as I look back on it, the boat wasn't that well built. It was really built to a price point. Now, the, the thing is that now that I've bought more boats and I've got more experience, I, can, I have more of an idea of what you should buy based on quality, not on what you like or what it does or whether it's fast or whatever, but it is, you understand more about quality. So the, the, the problem that I have is where people as their first boat go out and buy a, you know, a 50 foot catamaran. I'm like, you don't know what you're doing. You really are just showing a lot of inexperience in that, in doing that. And a lot of people do, but I always suggest buy something small and see if you like it. Um, but, you know, as I said, Nicky and Jason didn't. They just went and bought a 44-foot yeah. cat and they get on with fine with it. Yeah. So that's so that's just one point of view. And Nicky and Jason are absolutely fine with what they're doing, yeah? Yeah. There you go. Okay. Um... <laughs> you okay? <I'm> still sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> just snorted. <laughs> uh, okay. Any other questions for us? I've Usually I try and keep track, but it's been... That's, that hasn't happened today. So Eric says, can you talk about your honest maximum price for your next catamaran? Our honest max price, if we take all the money out and take a bank loan out to the point at which we are comfortable with, it is half a million dollars. That's the that's exactly where we are going to. Um, thank you, uh, Robert, for that. Um, so that it's, it's half a million US dollars, and that is not based on us having half a million dollars stuffed inside the mattress. It's 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 bank loans against. Um, against you know it's bank loans against ourselves plus anything we've got saved up plus the collateral in this so <clears throat> we're raising it from from different um from different sources um and ruby rose hasn't sold yet because well no one is buying anything in the boating market at the moment despite what everyone says because of brexit two reasons number one because of the vat the vat status of boats uh british boats and secondly because our currency is so bloody unstable um, um, Robert asked, um, mono or cat to learn to sail? Um, I'd say mono. Yeah, but like the it racing depends. catamarans are really fun. But yeah, I, I think probably a monohull is certainly cheaper, like a like a cruising mono. Um, it's certainly cheaper. So if you had to buy something to learn to sail and learn boat maintenance and learn, you know, boat ownership, then um, <clears throat> monohull is uh, is cheaper to buy in the first place and also 
Doc. Someone just asked if I can organise their wedding um, entertainment. I would love to. <laughs> I can officiate as well. I think it's officiate, not officiate. <laughs> I can officiate. Um, yeah, so happy to officiate at your wedding. I don't actually think that's what you asked. I just. <laughs> Yeah, I've just offered. I've just offered to officiate someone's wedding. <laughs> Are you legally allowed to officiate? Um, yep. I must be able to. Depends on the where where you where you are. All right. So anyone anyone needs a wedding? Is it called a chanter? Chanter? No, it's called a um um. What are those people that marry people? C- ceremony. An MC. <laughs> no. MC Nick. <laughs> MC Nick and his massive mouth. Can you guys help me out? What do you call the person that marries... Chaplain. No, not a chaplain. Like, a celebrant. Thank you. A celebrant. Thank you. A celebrant. Can you be a celebrant? Yes. <laughs> yes. I got. I can get a qualification in celebration. No, because apparently, like, there's some, like, old school law where if you are, like, a captain, then you are therefore able to... You yeah, are a celebrant. Uh, yeah, I think we looked into this. Yeah, I think you have to like register it de- and stuff. It depends on where in the world you are. Yeah. So I, I think I can. I'd love to marry someone. You could maybe offer to marry my sister. When I well, <laughs> that's probably one of the weirdest sentences ever to be put I on the internet. Marry that's, my sister. That's, to very, her. that's very Alabama. <laughs> marry my sister to her fiance. <laughs> I'd, actually, I'd like to do that. Yeah, we'd have to get. Can you imagine convincing Kelly of that? <laughs> She'd be like, hell no. <laughs> Messenger. No. Brilliant. Wouldn't that be fantastic? No. Um, so, yeah, anyone who needs a wedding officiator, um, yeah, my rates are very reasonable. <laughs> Two to three beers or whatever. Oh, anyway. Okay. Um, so, uh, to, yes. I don't know where, where did that come from? Where were we talk? Well, um, Someone asked if you could provide wedding entertainment and you just like offered to marry <laughs> them instead. Are we seeing a proposal? Mm. <laughs> Anyway, so um, any, does anyone have any other questions um, before we uh, continue with our next points of order? Uh, yes. Evie can officiate us in Florida. Evie. Someone called Evie Leno can yeah. officiate us. Yes. Yeah, so Nick asks, are we going to Southampton? More than, more than probably, yes. Um, we have some other things that we need to kind of make sure that we can or cannot do. Nick, the wedding singer. Oh, someone asked about my accordion playing. Where did I learn to play the accordion and why did I play the accordion? Uh, I was sailing. I was sailing with my friend Shina, who is um, uh, a, a die de la wall uh, old git, um, <laughs> and I love him to bits. But he is kind of like very old school. Anyway, he was learning to play the melodeon, and I was sailing with him. So I got on his boat for the weekend and picked it up, and I thought, yeah, I like this. I like this, and it's a really nice instrument to play. But I used to have my melodeon on this boat, but it's so antisocial. To they're so loud. Um, so yeah, so that's. Um, that's why I don't play it here. There you go. There you go. Any other questions? Philip says, are we still considering the Seawind 1600? If we had the money, I think it would be very, very high on the list. So, yeah, we yeah. just can't afford it. it. Just, it's too expensive. <clears throat> and even if we could afford it, even if Seawind gave us a 1600, we couldn't afford even the insurance. So, you know, it's just not realistic. You're right. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, um, I mean, that's the other thing you, you need to consider. I mean, really... And I tell Teresa's story all the time. When I graduated medical school, one of our consultants was like, now you listen here, you lot. You're all going to go out, get your first wage checks and go and buy Porsches. And he's like, don't go and buy Porsches because what happens is you have to understand. And he used to, he was, this was, he's completely, he always used to say, it's the total cost of ownership, the total cost of ownership. And it, it's true. The total cost of ownership of boats, it, it, is, it increases, it, not exponentially, but it ain't linear. So, you know, a, a million dollar boat costs so much to run. And really, after owning this boat for seven years, you know, we know what the ownership, the, the ownership costs are. So it is a percentage of the boat. So, yeah. Um, we've had this question a couple of times from Robert. We, what is the perfect monohull for a couple in the Caribbean? And someone just said we've missed Jennifer Lawrence's donation. Aww. Jennifer, we are so sorry about that. We, did, uh, no, we, we did. No, we didn't. She did. I think she came up twice. Oh, twice? Yes. In that case, yes, we did. Yes, sorry. I'm very, very sorry. Jennifer, you are uh, a dying, as always. <laughs> um, oh, you... yeah, no, sorry. You... Jennifer, quite correct. Uh, one vote for RV in California. All righty. Well done. We will definitely take that under consideration. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so... So, uh, Robert's question, perfect uh, monohull for a couple in the Caribbean. Um, is this for you, Robert? 
Let's assume that it is. Okay. Uh, He's not asking for a friend. <laughs> it's just for a mate. I've got some of these photos asking for a friend. Um, really, uh, production, production monohulls are actually really good in the Caribbean for the following reasons. They are, they've got huge amounts of um, saloon sp- uh, cockpit space. They've got lots of opening hatches and they are light displacement, light to medium displacement, which means that they, they sail well in some of the lighter winds you're going to get. And they're good at anchor. Uh, they're, you know, a blue water, I would say that maybe a 2018 Beneteau um, is better than a 2018 Halberg Grassi in the Caribbean. Mm. Um, if you're just going up and down the island chains, they go better, they're lighter, more ventilation. And they're very easy yeah. to buy, they're very easy to sell. Yeah. Um, if you're cruising yeah. and you don't like it, then you, I mean, a, a, a secondhand Geno or Beneteau or whatever, they, they go yeah. like that. So they're really easy to get your hands on. And we met a couple <clears> in... Um, Antigua, yeah. uh, who had just bought, that's what they were doing. They took six months off work. They were a young couple. They bought a four-year-old Beneteau 44, wasn't it? Yeah, it was like an ex-charter. Yeah, it was 115,000 US dollars. And the damn thing was immaculate. Mm. And the thing about it is that they were like, literally, um, they went to, I think it was, was it Moorings? Yeah, it was one of the charter companies. And they basically said, they, they had the boat surveyed and went back to Moorings and said, well, A, B, C, D and E need to be fixed. And they went, yeah, we'll just do it. Mm. So that, so literally they got a boat that was brand new. They bought it for $115,000 and sold it for $115,000 six months later. Mm. But, you know, and that's Simon and Marit and congratulations on your baby. <laughs> uh, they're still there, aren't they? Yeah. So, yes. So, uh, yes. So there you go. Someone says, how much are we asking for Ruby Rose? That is, it's £260,000, which at this rate is going to be about £260,000. <laughs> 20, 26 quid. Uh, no, £260,000, which is going to be about €240,000 in about a month, <laughs> as our pound devalues. In fact, we had, a, we had a Dutch bloke just pull up the other day and he's like, can I look at your boat? I want to buy it. And he looked around and I said, uh, you know, he looked around, I said, said £260,000, and he said, what's that in euros? And I said, well, it's about €270,000. And he said, in a month, it'll be less than that. So, you know, let's just see what happens. Mm. There you go. So, yes. Did you say you went to medical school? Yeah, I went to dental school, dental medical school. It's, uh, it's all one thing. I went to dental Dental med- school is much more difficult than medis- medical school, isn't it's the same, it? It's the same thing. It's the same building. <sighs> it's being, uh, no, 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 no. Sometimes you don't understand my humour. Humour? <laughs> humor you say tell us about this comedy star that you have hey. <laughs> oi oi okay um, alright so yeah so that you... I think alright so um, okay John says have you ever been threatened because John you, you've asked this a couple of times yes I've seen. have you ever been threatened by pirates or persons with not so good intent uh, no 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 thankfully no, no. no. Um, and there's ways I think a lot of people, a lot of sailors um, come to the Caribbean thinking it's going to be like Pirates of the Caribbean or a modern version of it, or like that there's going to be Somalians and little high-speed dinghies. It's not. Piracy... Sorry, am I keeping you... Are we keeping you up? What's going on? You have a little nap and come back and I'll still be going. Your voice has a very soporific effect on me. Time for sleep. <laughs> so, um, piracy... Okay, so this is uh, the way it worked with us. We went to the Caribbean with the same kind of like, oh my God, it's going to be like, are we going to get bored in the middle of the night by people with machetes? Two things. Um, no, there are some there are some piracy hotspots. And when you say piracy, it's piracy normally means like burglars. It's people coming from the land to rob boats. And the hotspots, there's a thing called, is it the CSS? Caribbean Safety and Security. Yeah. So there's a CSSN, which is the Caribbean Safety and Security Network, and they publish every crime in the Caribbean on a net on a on a map and it's updated. And they find statistically it's that there'll be like one person or one one robber that's doing that's good doing the rounds, stealing dinghies or outboards or whatever. And that that is and they get rid of that, they kind of that robber gets arrested, they find him because they're small communities and the crime problem goes away. So piracy isn't a problem generally in the Caribbean. There are some places that have greater problems than others, but they are all charted and you avoid those areas. Like there was, I think when we were in St. Lucia, was it Soufrier had a a, a crime problem at the time? It wasn't piracy, it was just local crime. It was local crime. But but, But it's now been addressed and and now the local community are taking actually very positive yeah. steps towards um trying to resolve that so to you know attract cruisers to the area yeah so um yeah because the, the thing is i mean 
you have to understand that for these island communities, tourism is everything. Like, and if their tourism suffers, they all suffer. And so really, they stamp out crime against uh, tourists like as quick as they can. I mean, irrespective of whatever problems they've got between themselves, I don't think they, they are. I mean, some, some areas, like some areas of Jamaica, are quite rough. Mm. But they, crime against tourists, they, they, they stamp on it as quickly as they can because they don't want it affecting. Mm. Um, in, in fact, even like some of the smaller islands like uh, Dominica, um, they, all the boat boys got together to form a, an organisation to, to kind of to make their image more... Um, a little bit, I guess, more professional. Yeah, more professional, yeah. and to, and to kind of give cruisers more confidence. Yeah. So yeah. So and now Dominica is like a really popular cruising yeah. destination because you know exactly what you're going to get. Like when yeah, you yeah. arrive, like all the boat boys, they belong to this like organization, yep. and there's no just random people coming in to approach the boat. They're all like from this organization, and yep. it's very well yep. organized. So yeah, they're all very professional. I mean, they charge they just, an astronomical amount of money do, for their services. For what it is, but you know, but, yeah. uh, but whatever. Yes. Um, so someone said, "What is the most harrowing experience?" I don't think we've had anything harrowing. No, I've not. Well, I think I've not felt harrowed. No, I haven't been harrowed. No. So, um, uh, but what I would say um, is that there is. I, I was fairly miserable um, a couple of days off the coast of Portugal. Uh, that was that was really yeah, but we've, shitty right yeah. Now. So we've had some some fairly un, uncomfortable, I wouldn't yeah. say unpleasant or unsafe, just but uncomfortable. Long term, weather. when you're un, when you're when you're uncomfortable for a couple of days. Mm. Um, so basically, someone says, "Oh, this Tron has asked a really question, intelligent question." It says, "Is it possible to buy um, a, a detailed world sailing map from Navionics or Sea Map? How extensive is that to maintain?" I don't know. I've never seen a, one of the whole world. Um, although Google Earth is free. And that will give you a map of the world um, in incredible detail or Google Maps. And you can plot distances on it. The charts which give you um, like all the voyage, th there's too much data on there. Um, there's too much data on there for um, to be put onto one map. They're huge files. But what I would say is that, you know, if you look, we've got a Garmin system and Garmin is um, just going to... Um, Garmin um, messages, uh, sorry, Garmin charts are really expensive, but if you buy them a year old, um, like a lot of organizations just sell them off really cheap. So our, 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 um, our charts we get on the internet for 10, 10, 5, 10 percent of what they should cost. Um, there you go. Mm. Um, any, any, other questions? any other questions? Any other questions before we head How up? long do you see yourself doing this? That's a good question by Andrew. Um, we don't really have a specific time frame in mind. We've always just said as long as we're enjoying ourselves, yeah. then we'll continue doing this. By this, I mean both sailing um, and also the YouTube channel. Um, they may, like we, we might get to our limit with one of those two things at a different time. So we might... I don't know, at one point say, you know what, we need a break from the YouTube channel, or we might say, actually, we need a break from sailing, but we want to carry on filming and documenting, but we want to do something different. I can't see it. I mean, I, never say never. Yeah. I, at the moment, I, I, I love what we're doing. Yeah. But I think that you have to find your own meter, your own level here. Yeah. Um, for us, it was, you know, we hit the YouTube channel thing too hard. We hit the sailing thing too hard. And now that we are calmer with the way we do things yeah well it takes a little while to get yeah. into your groove you, you do have to find your groove yeah uh, and so yeah for us you know i can see us doing this for a good few years yeah absolutely because we're enjoying it yeah exactly. it's not you know there are a lot of people that are like oh it's harrowing you know i use the word harrowing mm -hmm. thank you chris that's very nice too. so yeah so um i can see us doing this for, for a few more years i am you know for those of you who have just tuned in um we are in our off season contemplating um Hiring an R3. Mr. Jimmy says we're frauds. Mr. Jimmy, why are we frauds, sir? I'd like to hear Mr. Jimmy's answer. Mr. Jimmy is a ginger cat, by the way. Anyway, um, in the office, you were, you were saying. Yeah, we're thinking about um, just hiring an RV and trying that for a bit. So, you know, in, in a kind of contrast to what the winds did, which is RV to boat, we're going to, because I used to have a camper van. Um, so, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so that's one thing we're trying to do. So, um, we still love what we do, don't we? Alan thinks a cooking show. Yes, <laughs> cooking with Nick. 
Very, yeah, essentially like no crossover on those two topics, I don't think, uh, sailing and cooking show, but um, yeah. Yeah, so I think that's what we're... Um, why, why I've got all of you here, who you... Could you all please click the little thumbs up thing and the like thing, because it doesn't, it doesn't always happen. So if you're watching on, a, on the internet rather than a TV, if you could... Uh, if you could just uh, click the thumbs up. Or the thumbs down, Mr. Jimmy. You little ginger pussy. Um, I think like, I knew someone who had a cat called Mr. Jimmy. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah Mr. Jimmy. Um, thank you so much. So, uh, thank you very much. So, th the, the African adventure, that sounds very nice. So, any more questions? Any more questions? I think Mr. Jimmy might get... Blocked. Mr. Jimmy says you go to both shows and critique sailing vessels. What else does he say? I think he meant boat shows. You boat go shows. to boat shows and critique sailing vessels. How yeah. much... Of that can will you take okay you're not making any sense um i'm gonna oh, I... don't, no leave mr jimmy he's got problems i don't think i can block from my telephone anyway. i can block him okay mr. jd ray thank you how many hours per week do you spend producing your youtube channel uh that varies i think probably between the two of us i would say anywhere between 30 and 50 hours yeah. a week yeah um, at the moment it, it is it is intensive and the thing about it is and actually this is um while i've got all of you here um it is fairly intensive, and one video that we were thinking of putting out is um, is focus how we video, <laughs> just just a behind the scenes about how we make videos for for what we do, um, because it is complicated. And the thing about it is, the more we get involved in it, the more complicated we we, we kind of find it is. Yeah. You know? it, it it's got to the point where it's like God. I remember when we first started, it used to take us what three hours to. For edit, like to a edit 20 a video. minute video yeah. Yeah. And, and we'd be like oh my god three or four hours i remember this i remember this this one of our first followers he's like you should be spending 15 minutes per minute of video i remember saying to you that's nuts <laughs> who spends 15 minutes in a minute video like in a 20 minute video that's like four hours and now it's probably more like half an hour per video per, per minute so it really does it does uh yeah it's it's, it's a, yeah so yeah. someone just asked, it's Eric asked, how many months do we sail a season? This year we've we've been on the boat since January. Um, so yeah. that's seven, seven... Six months. Seven, no, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, eight. Eight? Yeah, we, I went to back to the boat in January. Yeah, okay. I didn't get back until yeah. March. No, February. Yeah, so it's it's a full-time job. Yeah. Um, and the most we did, we did 14 months straight once. That was from May till... The following June, June, July, yeah. yeah, and that was too much. God, we yeah. we just needed to get off the boat then. Yeah. So that was hard. So yeah, so seven to eight months is is what we need, and we also we do need downtime because there was another some on one of the Facebook groups that we we are on, um, and I see Rogers on here as a mod for this um, Facebook uh, group, which is called YouTube Sailing Channels. That someone was like, well, why do you take time off? Why you know why why are you not putting videos out in real time? Because to get quality videos, you have to step away and go, right, we need to edit for two or three days. So, yeah. Um, so, you go. Yeah. Uh, someone says, would you consider a 360 camera? Um, yes, we will. And someone, I think, is lending us one at the Annapolis Boat Show. If we get time to use it, we will to take some 360 stuff. My issue with this is that really regarding what we do and how we film, there's only two of us. And so... Even with the best will in the world, we need someone on the main camera. Someone has to be talking to the camera. We can normally set up a second camera, have a GoPro going, and then something else. Mm. To add another camera, we just don't have the hands. If we had, like, oh, you know, a if team. We, if we had a team, if, <laughs> if like, because Delos have got five of them. Yeah, Four of them. Four of them. Plus a baby. Yeah. And, uh, you know, SLV have got, like, a full film crew now. <laughs> yeah. You know, Peter Jackson's in one of the, in one of the holds. <laughs> He's directing the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I have Agavon as directed by Peter Jackson. So they've got like a full team. So really, from our point of view, while there's just two of us, there's only a certain amount that we can do. So yeah, that's that's really what we're um, A massive thank you to John McConnell. Yes, thank, thank you, John, you John McConnell. That's, uh, there's very... two. Who are these two people? No, we've already... That one. And this one? J.D. Ray. Who's this? And John McConnell. And that's John McConnell as well? No, Robert Edgerton. Thank you both. So it's really nice. So yeah. So thank you to that. So yes. Yeah, so uh, regarding footage of what we're doing, um, we really are going to stick with what we're going to stick with at the moment. Um, we have this, we have talked about where we're taking our videography and how we're going to move with everything. We obviously will upgrade our, upgrade our gear again. But again, you know, we were talking about this at lunchtime. How realistically speaking, you do have to. 
it's the story that you tell and you can tell stories with a with it with an iphone camera so it's not just about the quality of the film work you know what you're doing so uh yeah there you go now mr jimmy obviously has some issues that he needs to disappear with so off you go <laughs> um yeah so there you go um so terry says how do you decide the name of ruby rose i know that all of you or most of you know this uh ruby was my grandmother's name and rose was teresa's grandmother's name so literally it is um it is a combination of ruby and rose our two grandmothers so there you go um, Chris, thank you very much for that. And someone got the tickets to Annapolis. So yes, um, any other questions before we head off for our evening libation in the sunshine? Well, Carl says that his wife has asked a question, Ooh, so we done. better answer it. Um, she says, if you had an emergency at home, what would be the longest it could take to get from your boat to your home, assuming the boat's at anchor somewhere? Well, we'd put the boat in a marina. We wouldn't leave it at anchor. Um, but it depends, obviously, on where we are in the world. I remember when we were in the Caribbean, we were in St. Lucia, and there was... a an emergency family emergency back home for me and um i had to look into literally getting on a plane and um like the next day and it was going to take me 48 hours and five planes and a significant amount of money to get back to adelaide um i think i had to go like saint lucia to florida florida to somewhere on the west coast west coast to sydney and then sydney adelaide yeah um but obviously, you know, if that if we had to fly home from St. Lucia to London, there's like a direct flight, um, there's like a 12 hour direct flight. So, um, yeah, it, it really depends on where we Right now, because we're in Europe and one of the reasons we came back to Europe was because we wanted to be closer to our families. Um, it's obviously like an hour and a half flight from here to London. And for me to get back to Australia is only like, only, <laughs> it's only a day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so Goodbye to Zari, she's going. Um, Goodbye, Zari. Terry says, Ruby was her grandmother's name, Rose is her mother's name, and she's called Teresa. You can come and crew for us, my dear. <laughs> um, Billy asks a really good question, actually. Billy Newport has said about um, any advice we bottom paint in the Caribbean. Yes, I do have some advice on bottom paint in the Caribbean. Um, you can get, we used Sea Jet, which basically, the thing about, okay, firstly, if you are taking a boat to the Caribbean, take the bottom paint in a bilge. Bottom paint anti foul is ridiculously expensive, like outrageously, outrageously expensive in the Caribbean. Nutcase prices. If you go on to Budget Marine, um, which is the big island or island water world, which are the two big channels in the Caribbean, you can look at the prices of, of anti foul there. It is outrageous. So take anti foul with you if you can. That's the first thing. Secondly, the commonest thing in the Caribbean is called Sea Jet, I think, or Sea Hawk. Now, that is brilliant. The problem is it's not compatible with Micron. So if you've got Micron or something from International Paints and you paint that over it, it all flakes off. So you do, you do have to make sure that your anti is compatible. Jeff says, do you get permission from vendors to um, yeah, film? Yes, of course we do. Yeah, we ask. We don't just get on their boats and say we're filming. Mm -hmm. we, we always. But there's so many people filming. It's, yeah. not, it's not like we're like, you know, they, they everyone is now on there with cameras. Yeah. If not videoing it for their own, you know, records when they get home. They are. There's lots and lots of people there. Mm -hmm. And yes, someone said, did we ask Neil if we could film? Yes, we did. We went on with. We went on and asked if we could film. Mm -hmm. The problem is at the point, and we've. Look, uh, and we're not bringing this Neil thing up again, because um, we've talked to Neil since, and we've talked about that a, a bit in the last live stream. Um, they were too busy doing something else that day to give us any attention, um, and we've got the footage of it. They literally were they were popping champagne and having a party and we said can we get on the boat and film they went yeah off you go and we just we went on and they didn't have anyone to guide us around which probably wasn't probably wasn't in their best interest because they weren't able to point stuff out to us um so we had to then kind of go and find them and talk about everything then so uh, tom says are we still looking for catherine yes we are <laughs> um and as we hit 800 viewers so thank you to all 800 of you who have clicked um like so um thank you very much and um, that's i think it's called a thumbs up a thumbs up is it it's called a thumbs up i'm more on it's also called a like it's yeah like, yeah no that. you're quite correct sorry that's um someone says uh, any other youtube channels and other resources for recommending to produce videos yes uh, casey neistat and pete mckinnon they're huge huge um huge um creators none of them are in sailing casey neistat is famous and the thing he, he's a New Yorker. If you, those of you who don't know, obviously, most a lot of you will know. He's a, he's a New Yorker that really vlogs um, from the just on. He, he does video reviews 
um, technical reviews, but mostly it's just vlogs of his day. Mm. But he is so good at crafting a story out of nothing. And that, I think, that, that from, that, from the point of view why I like him or why, why I really like him is because it doesn't really matter what he's doing. He could be, you know, making an omelette. Um, oh, is he, he's gone to LA, has he? Yeah, and he stopped vlogging as well. Okay. Anyway. Anyway. You can watch the back. Watch the back. So when he was in New York, he would take nothing and turn it into something. That's the first thing. Peter McKinnon is a Canadian bloke who is just, his he's, uh, rise is meteoric. He understands his craft very, very well. And he's very, very good at explaining uh, in a very kind of like upbeat way how to get the best out of your videography. So those two things, um, those two, those two things, those two creators. If you want um, hints, we use Final Cut Pro. Um, Ryan Nangle is really good as well for Final mm. Cut Pro. Um, and we use a lot of his stuff. And the thing about Ryan Nangle is a lot of his, a lot of his uh, stuff is free. Like he makes a lot of transitions for Final Cut Pro and a lot of things. And so his tutorials, I've learned a lot from Ryan Nangle. Um, yeah, so there you go. So there you go. Um, any other questions before we head off? All of you. Anything else? Someone's asked about Dyneema rigging. Um, Dyneema rigging, if you're trying to save weight, yes. Um, yeah, there you go. <laughs> no, so Dyneema is fantastic if you're trying to save weight. I prefer the longevity of, uh, stain, uh, of stainless steel wire. There you go. So, All um, right, I think that we're we are we are always done. So yeah, so um, we are as I said, we pull out the water tomorrow. Tomorrow is our hopefully our last day. Someone said, can we repeat the names of the vloggers? One is Casey Neistat, uh, that's C A S E Y, and then Neistat is N E I S T A T, and the other is Peter McKinnon. It's Peter um, <laughs> McKinnon. Uh, McKinnon M C K I double N O N. Uh, they're pretty cool. So those are, those are the two vloggers that I would recommend that you look at. And Ryan Nangle, which is R-Y-I-N, and then a N A N G L E. Um so, we're in a sh sh spelling bee. <laughs> Sp spelling bee. Um, so listen, we pull out tomorrow. We will obviously, obviously, obviously uh, come back and do another live feed pretty soon. We probably won't be on Ruby Rose. Mm. Um, but we will hopefully be in Southampton uh, and... If we are going, we will let you all know and we'd love to see you all at Southampton. For all of those of you watching, we are at Annapolis and we are giving away limited edition Ruby Rose stickers to anyone wearing our gear um, while they while we've got them. When they've gone, they've gone. When they've gone, they've gone. Yeah. Um, so thank you everyone to that. It's been a pretty awesome life. It's been I've fantastic. It's been yeah, enjoyed. it's been all, fun. All 750, 800 of you. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. 800 people. That's like a gig. That's like a massive gig. Small gig. Small gig. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, uh, yes, we, yes, we've talked about everything and we will be back again soon. So I hope you all, all have an amazing Sunday. Whatever you do, um, if you are before lunch, have a lovely roast. If you're after lunch... Ooh, a lovely roast. A roast. A Sunday oh, roast. That's what we're going to do next Sunday when we're in the UK. Damn straight. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Damn straight. Go for a nice roast. Anyone going to the Faversham Hop Festival next week, I will probably be there. Yeah. Um, there's a, a folk festival I'm going to for the first time in five years, and I'm super excited. So uh, that's my weekend next weekend. And yeah, we'll be back with our videos. We've got another video out for uh, Patreon. Next week is um, oh God. a canal video. Okay, yeah. And for you lovely people who are, uh, the general release is another cat review. So enjoy yourselves. You are all fantastic. And we will see you all at some point soon. Yeah. Goodbye. Now, now you have to, goodbye. Now you have to work out how to <laughs> this off. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs>